Ime Udoka's adjustments and Jason Tatum's growing legend are factors you'll see a breakdown on later on in today's upload, but Al Horford leads any player on the Celtics in playoff plus minus just ahead of Tatum, while without the NBA's most underrated center Robert Williams III, Boston's defense in these playoffs has been worse than the number 6 ranked and eliminated Chicago Bulls. The Godfather in Big Al, the Time Lord in RW3, and the Batman in Grant pose an intimidating force that are no joke to try and get buckets on. Following a sweep of the Brooklyn Nets, Boston molded into a championship caliber team when they went through a grueling 7 game battle with the most dominant player in the world. They went down 3-2 in that second round series, heading back to a game in Milwaukee on the road, but ultimately won 4 games to 3. Facing adversity again in the conference finals, they went down 2-1 against Miami, but adjusted to dominate the next two. Greatly contributing to that, this video shows you and breaks down the game-changing plays from the Boston Celtics' monster big man rotation, which are causing problems for the Miami Heat. Before continuing, only 10.6% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss a single upload. Also, please drop a thumbs up, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference in YouTube's algorithm. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Hoops, and I'll follow you back. Link is down below in the description for those two platforms. A pivotal Game 5 saw Boston's two starting centers rack up a combined five momentum-shifting blocks, which we're about to go into the film room on. The NBA may be dominated by small ball, but the Celtics roster is equipped with bigs up and down their roster who are laterally quick enough to switch onto smaller guards or forwards and make life a living hell for them. In a winner go home s Game 5 on the road of the Eastern Conference Finals, Robert Williams, Al Horford, and off the bench, Grant Williams, combined to be a plus 31 when each were on the court. On the other side, Kyle Lowry and Max Struess went a combined 0 for 15 in Game 5, which was the worst 0 for, for a starting backcourt in playoff history since starters officially started being tracked over 50 years ago in 1971. One of the primary factors making it so tough on Struess and Lowry is Grant, Rob, and Al's ability to easily switch on to smaller players, and when the game plan is to hedge, their ability to bolt back to their man and recover, when you combine that capability with the heart and all-out hustle these guys play with, as I said, it makes life a living hell for attacking shot creators. The first sequence will heavily break down features the Godfather racking up two of his four blocks on the evening in a span of under a minute back in Game 4. Bam Adebayo's used to sprinting down and beating big men up the floor in transition, but even after bursting up the court and showing off a nifty in and out dribble on the fly, Horford's effort and sneaky speed for his age allow him to get right back and instantly cut off the right driving lane, and watch how he reads Adebayo's body language, anticipating the attack and rising up for the highlight block. Unteachable instincts, but more impressively, the springiness for a near 36 year old just goes to show you how Horford's taken care of his body over the years. He's racked up a ton of mileage, but remains at the top of his game. Aside from Brown's poster, the play of Game 5 was Horford pulling down this board, splitting PJ Tucker and Kyle Lowry, and then staying poised enough to keep it under control in transition past the scrambling Max Struess for the N1. May I remind you that that's a 6'10", 35-year-old man. Some incredible ball handling for a center right there from Horford. Al's health, leadership both in the locker room and on the court, plus his two-way consistency, deserves every bit of praise. Next, we'll look at the biggest and potentially the best defensive player on the Celtics and across the entire NBA as well in Robert Williams III, whose 7'5 wingspan, not only on the back end but out on the perimeter with how he can shock shooters with stuffed shots, is incredibly imposing. The Time Lord's lethal combination of reach, athleticism, as well as intelligence keeps opposing players up at night, thinking about what they're going to do to score over such an athletic phenom. Once Rob's opponents step between the lines, they feel that same fear they felt when they were tossing and turning. Knowing he can rotate over to the weak side, here Williams cuts off the paint, baiting Duncan Robinson into a baseline outlet pass to the corner, instead of panicking and bursting back over, potentially falling for a pump fake or getting out of position and allowing a drive, Rob's aware of his incredible standing long jump as he pops up from seemingly out of nowhere 
to successfully bait Vincent into thinking he has enough space, making a highlight block for the ages. Even when he falls for the pump fake right here, watch the swift footwork to stay on balance and somehow get enough momentum into his strides to stun Caleb Martin at the basket. The second half of Game 5 saw Williams do the same thing he did to Vincent in the first half to P.J. Tucker, swatting P.J. in his favorite spot, again in the corner. Rob is so damn good at convincing shooters that they're open, and then just popping up from 7 plus feet away and stopping them in their tracks. I broke down a few of Rob's Game 4 defensive possessions in this video right here, go watch that after this. For some reason, I didn't talk about Jimmy Butler becoming a victim of a Robert Williams block, RW3, stays with Jimmy Butler out on the perimeter, and again, a Celtics rim protector cuts off the right side. As Williams keeps his hands up and sticks with Butler as he jump stops, moving on to Grant Williams, who didn't only play exceptional defense on Giannis and have a 27-point Game 7 against Milwaukee, but he's also valuable on the glass, regardless of how he's shooting from the floor. After a deep-range bomb from Struess, Grant knows that a long shot equals a long rebound, but he also knows he has to box out Jimmy Butler at the same time, so he stays near the rim at first and dives on the floor backwards to snatch it away from Jimmy. Just an incredible rebound I thought I had to break down. In terms of Miami's game plan, all series, it's been to slide up into the Celtics' driving gaps while cutting off the passing lane simultaneously, forming a right triangle with three to four players, while having the low man directly behind that. That set allowed the Heat to rack up 29 steals in their victories during games one and three. Courtesy of Ben Taylor, aka NBA YouTube's version of Michael Jordan, you're seeing footage of how this right triangle defensive set, as I like to call it, neutralized Trey Young in round one, and has also forced Boston into some head-scratching turnovers all throughout this series. But Coach Ime Udoka clearly has watched a ton of film. He made the adjustment to have his high-volume creators make the early pass and also have anyone off the ball cut to the basket as much as possible. Seemingly simple changes, but that increased ball and man movement from Boston made the defenders looking to shoot the gap, get caught in no man's land, and generally scramble the Heat defense. Boston also ran more action with floor spacers like Horford clearing out, which gave Tatum and others a lot more space to work with in empty side pick and rolls. Right now, Tatum and Brown are either getting pin downs off the ball and wide open shots, or isolations with no one coming over to double from the weak side. Jason Tatum's doing a great job of making the right reads, but proving how all-time great of a score he's been for the Celtics over the past few years, the former Duke Blue Devil became the second youngest player in the 75-year history of the NBA to reach 1,500 points in the postseason. Jason's got to keep using the doubters as fuel to his fire. For some reason, he gets disrespected so much, but in my personal opinion, he's got every tool in his bag on both ends of the court that screams superstar. We'll see if Tatum can solidify that with a ring. The Celtics were 11th in the Eastern Conference back in January, and now they're one win away from the NBA Finals. So today's question is, what led to this historically great turnaround the most? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shout out. Top 5 commenters by June 21st receive free NBA merchandise of their choosing this summer, so leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Shout out to Swu, who says Celtics in 6. Appreciate every answer. I hope you have a great one. D-Flow signing off.